morning, everybody. It is actually 1035 in the morning, Thursday, March 25th. Um, I think I found my, my new calling. I'm just going to be the person that's on the phone. I'm going to re re record my voice. So if you call for time, I'll, I'll throw in the temperature too, wherever you are. It's, might work. Might work. I might try this. Um, God, it's been a nuts morning. A bunch of th things going on. Uh, I, I want to uh, announce a couple of things here. Um, hold on. The next live stream for the clubhouse uh, is going to be next Wednesday, the 31st at 3 p.m. Um, we had normally been doing Tuesdays, and on Tuesday at exactly the same time, I have a really major interview that I, that I could not change that I have to do. Um, I don't have to do it, but I really, I'm compelled to do it. Um, so uh, it's going to be next Wednesday, the 31st at 3 p.m., and the Skype and FaceTime one-on-ones are going to be April 3rd. So April 3rd is FaceTime and Skype one-on-ones. Uh, Aaron's opening that up uh, to sign-ins. Uh, that um, Today at 3 p.m., on uh, Sirius Channel 27, that's Jim Ladd's channel. He's premiering our new uh, immediate family single, Can't Stop Progress. It's actually being released tomorrow, but he's gonna interview, the, the whole band's gonna be uh, with him on Zoom. We're gonna uh, talk about it and talk about things, uh, and then he'll, he's gonna be playing the new single. So that's today, um, Thursday at 3 p.m. West Coast time on uh, channel 27, the Jim Ladd channel. Um, and then I was thinking about other things. Um, oh, I, and I just talked to Cliff Jones at LA Vintage Gear, and we're going to um, try for a book signing again. We canceled the last one because COVID was really just terrible, but with the advent of them opening up outdoor you know, dining and, and a lot of things, um, we're gonna do um, the book signing finally, uh, on May 1st. It's a Saturday, May 1st. It'll be during the day, and but it's not just going to be a free-for-all. It's going to be um, temperatures taken, masks required, and uh, and distancing uh, necessary. And we want to play it safe. I don't want to, there's nothing uh, in my life that's worth anybody me being put in danger over, but we're starting to feel like this might be a good time, so we're going to be putting up flyers on it and getting the ball rolling. He still has a bunch of books in, in the warehouse at his place from the last time that we, uh, we tucked away. And I'll probably bring more. Um, so, that, so there's a bunch of stuff going on. So that's May 1st, and it looks like that's going to happen. And then somebody mentioned something yesterday that I totally forgot about. And I thought, I'm going to visit this because it's just too nuts to, to pass up. Um, back in the kind of late 60s, uh, I was in a, a several bands, I mean, from like 65 to through 69, I was probably in about five different, six different bands during that period. Well, one of the bands, we um, ended up opening up uh, at a club on the Sunset Strip, and I can't remember which club it was at this point. There were so many at this point, but we opened up for the Turtles in this club, and so, and we were like one of these bands. We were doing all kinds of cover stuff, Beatles, and all kinds of stuff. Um, so we uh, we did our set, and then we stayed and we watched the Turtles play, and it was great. We were going to be there for two nights, so we watched the Turtles and, and really enjoyed their show. And thought, what the hell? So the next day, we spent the day rehearsing, and we learned the Turtles show. And so when we came in the second night to play, we played their show. And they weren't there. You know, they, they showed up for their show. And so we pretty much nailed it. Our singer totally was unbelievable. He could really mimic anybody. I mean, he was really something. And, um, and so we did that. And then they came out and played their show. And they got kind of a lukewarm response compared to the previous night. And no, we never said anything. Well, years later, I ended up working with um, Howard and Mark when they were Flo and Eddie. And, uh, and I talked to them one day and I said, do you happen to remember a gig kind of in the late 60s at this club? And 
first night rocked, second night, you know, wasn't quite as good. And they went, that was the weirdest night. We couldn't figure out what happened. I said, let me, let me tell you a story. And I told them they thought it was the greatest thing in the world. They weren't pissed. They thought it was just the funniest thing they ever heard. Um, but I did a bunch of stuff with Flo and Eddie um, over the years. We did a midnight special, which was really great. And I think James Brown was on the same one. But when we did their thing, they flew them in on wires and they were dressed as angels with giant wings and they were coming down out of the ceiling and stuff. I mean, the stuff they did like with Zappa and everybody was just, just great. And actually Howard, um, uh, Howard Kalen is in my book. I, I got a picture of him. I had never got a finger from Mark because I hadn't seen him since I started taking the pictures, but Howard I had seen. But somebody mentioned this yesterday, and I pulled it up and went, God, yeah, I totally forgot about this. So this was, a, this was one track. They, they did an album called Illegal, Immoral, and Fattening. And this was in 1975. And um, so it was, you know, like all these other players did it, but there was a, a, a one track on it that was like a single on it. And it was myself and Danny Korchmar um, Ainsley Dunbar, the great drummer Ainsley Dunbar, and Ian Underwood. Uh, Ian Underwood um, was a remarkable player, and um, he, he was he played with the Mothers and all kinds of play. And he ended up doing a number of uh, the TV shows that we worked on with Mike Post. He would he got calls to come in and do that stuff too. But I did a few album projects with him. Um, but this was called "Let Me Make Love to You," Flo and Eddie. So I just thought I'd play this one. It's just too much fun to, to pass up today. Just a kind of a, a goofy thing here. I got a ton of things, but I'm, I'm going to take care of a bunch of stuff. I got a whole pile of book orders. And I just came from the warehouse and picked up another dozen boxes. And um, I think I'm going to have to do a, a, um, a, like I said before, a, a QVC style hustle about all the crap that I've that I'm trying to unload um, that represents my life at this point. So I'm, I, I'm going to probably do that. Maybe, maybe I'll do that over the weekend. And, uh, but I'll, I'll do two videos that day. I'll do the, the hustle video and then I'll do a music video. So I don't, I don't want to leave that behind by any means, but let's go ahead. This, check this out. This is really fun. There's, this is the mother. This feels like the mothers. It feels like the beach boys. It's got like a little of everything in it. It's pretty nuts. So so here we here we go. Let me get this back to zero, ground zero here. I don't want that. I just want this. And let's hope for no commercials. <laughs>
guys are so much fun to work with. True characters. I always love the real interesting characters that I've gotten to work with. Kinky Friedman was great to work with. I mean, I love these people who have like just really twisted outlooks on, on a lot of things. Um, I was such a mother's fan. I was such a huge Zappa fan. I used to go to like as many concerts as I could. I remember going to a concert. I think it was at the uh, Anaheim Convention Center. And there was a couple of acts like Pablo Cruz and somebody else uh, on the bill. It was really a, a great show. But at one point, the, the mothers are up uh, on stage and they're playing and people keep yelling out um, requests at them. And finally, Zappa stops. He goes, come on, let's stop this. So he goes, okay, just a minute to the audience. Goes around, talks to each guy in the band and goes, and they played all the requests at the same time. Each guy had a different song. And as soon as this cacophony was over, he turned and looked at the audience and said, quests are over, new material, and they went on with the show. I mean, I just always loved that kind of an, an attitude. And they, he used to do these things called guambos. And it, it was the, the Vito and his dancers, like these freak shows. And I remember going and seeing them uh, at the Cheetah, which was down in um, Santa Monica, Venice area, out on the pier. It, it, I think it was originally the Avalon Ballroom, and it became the Cheetah, and went and saw those guys there, and it was this unbelievable spectacle, but musically so deep, but just this incredible uh, array of, of visuals and stuff on that. Um, and it was real interesting, because down underneath that place was a recording, a rehearsal studio called Whale, um, rehearsal and I think it's Paul Whaley I think was his name I think he was the drummer from Blue Cheer and that that was his rehearsal place and that's where when we first formed Wolfgang that's where we would go down and rehearse there it was pretty pretty dank right down there right at water level and stuff <laughs> it's pretty those days were amazing oh uh, god I was in a band called the Comfortable Chair and we rehearsed in, they had a band house and it was Charlie Chaplin's old beach house. And it was really decrepit at this point. It had fallen into ruin. It was long ago. It was bulldozed down and condos were put up. But all these memories come kind of wafting back. I can, I can feel them bouncing around inside my head. There's enough space in there for it to be active. Um, so that's that. I've got to make a couple of calls right now. The pot, the electronic pots on my old car peace love base are crapping out I, i'm gonna have to get them in i'm gonna call this friend of mine and see about getting it over to him and have him give the base a good once through i'd like to start playing it again on some of these videos and uh, right now it's just too noisy it's just it's still the original 62 jazz bass guts in it and these pots i think are just finally wore out so i'm gonna call uh, this friend of mine and see if he can do it and he built me an exquisite bass a number of years ago and I'm having a little grounding issue so I'm going to see if I can get both bases over to him and have him take a look at it and um, and then I can start using both of them for these. Um, I'll dig in deeper tomorrow. Um, I've got uh, a couple of things I'm thinking of looking at here. Um, I Now I'm I'm going through my list of things because I don't want to be redundant unless it's a, a really purposeful. So I keep looking through, trying to make sure, because sometimes I'll do a whole thing and I'm all ready to go. And I go, oh, yeah, this will be great. And then I roll through and I go, Christ, 200 videos ago I talked about this. So I'm trying to trying to monitor it now a little bit better. Um, so I'm just going to wish everybody a really great day. Um, and just as as Flo and Eddie said, let me make love to you. <laughs> wow, wow. Um, so, 3 p.m. today, uh, Pacific Time, Jim Ladd's show on Channel 27 on Sirius XM. And that'll be the premiere of Can't Stop Progress, our new single, which is released tomorrow. Um, the video is unbelievable for it. Mikey P, who does the art video editing, has done an unbelievable job. That'll be out soon. The EP will be out soon. And then late August, the actual album that was supposed to be out last November will be coming out. And uh, by then, we should be pretty close to finished with the documentary film, too. They're hoping by late summer to have that done. We've got 
a couple of major things to do for that, and then a, a, a number of more interviews that they're planning on, and then uh, they'll finish it. And we've got a, a, a song uh, written specifically for the movie, and we're going to get in the studio and, and record that, so they have that. So lots going on. So I'm going to wish everybody a wonderful day. Have a great one. Be safe. Be safe. Please safe. God, please. Um, and uh, and as always, thank you to everybody working their butts off, trying to keep people safe. You know, keep the world rolling. Keep things functioning. There's still so much bullshit out there going on. And uh, yeah, I, I want it to end. I want to be able to come play live music for people. I want to be able to travel to other places and 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 share what we do. And it's still not possible, still not safe. So um, I'm going to continue this. So take good care. Now remember, uh, live stream is next Wednesday, 31st, 3 p.m. So I will talk to you tomorrow, and we'll figure out something else what to do. And again, off to a second year. I'm loving it. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.